So you don't have enough of a deposit today to get into the property market. So you only really have one choice, right? Which is I've got to wait another 12 to 18 months before I can save enough to be able to purchase an investment property. Well, there's something else that you can do that allows you to get into property today. I'm going to show you exactly how it works, a step-by-step -step guide, as well as that a case study. So it brings it all together in a nice little package so that you can understand it and implement it as fast as today. If you're interested, then definitely keep watching. Hey guys, my name's Ravi and welcome back to Personal Finance with Ravi Sharma. If you're new here, smash that subscribe button because I talk about real estate, cryptocurrency and financial freedom. Now, if you're new onto this channel or someone's shared this video and they're like, why should I listen to this dude? I'm going to give you a rundown in 10 seconds. My name's Ravi and I've been running the number one property channel here in Australia. I also run one of the fastest growing buyers agencies and for two years in a row, Search Property has come in as a finalist at the REB Awards as the best buyers agency in Australia. We've bought over a thousand properties, helped more than 800 people and if that's not enough of a reason to subscribe to this channel, then I don't know what is. But if you're interested in how the buyers agency works, then definitely go down to the link in the description below, which is for searchpropertyau.com.au and you'll find out more details around that. Now you understand why you should probably listen to me. Now, in addition to the buyer's agency, I also have my own property portfolio. You can go and check out this video here, which is how I've amassed over a $12 million portfolio over the last 10 years. Now let's get straight into the video. We all know at this point that you either have to have a 10% deposit or you can go and get into a property at 20%. So you say, well, okay, on a 500K property, 10%, which is my minimum amount that I could probably get in with is $50,000. Now, depending on when you're watching this and how old you are, 50,000 could sound like a lot and it could also sound like it's not that much. The reality is that's what you need to get into a property, but that only covers the deposit. You also then have upfront costs that you're gonna need. And if you can't pay for those things, well, it doesn't matter if you've got a deposit or not. So really to buy a 500K property, you probably need 50,000, which is the deposit. Then you need the additional fees like stamp duty, legal inspections, if you use a buyer's agent, all of that could probably come to about 30 to $35,000. So realistically, you need about 85,000 to actually buy a property for 500K. Now you might be going, well, okay, I've just saved 50K. Now you're telling me I have to save for another 30 or 40K. That's gonna take me another year. And if I wait 12 months in this market that we're in now, that 500K property could be worth $550,000. So now I'm having to pay more while being out of the market. I don't really want that option. So what I'm gonna introduce you to is a concept that people are using today to get into the property market a lot faster. And yes, everything in life comes with risks. So watch all the way through because I wanna break down exactly what the pros are and then what the cons are. And if it's something that's suitable for you, I'll also point you in the right direction so you can start like literally after this video. Now you may have heard of this term called a guarantor loan. You probably have heard it and said, I have no idea what that means and you continue on with your day. For others, you may have heard this and said, I have no idea what that is, but I wanna know more. And so here, enter Ravi into the chat. Now, guarantor comes from the word guarantee. And so what it is, is effectively saying someone else is gonna guarantee the deposit amount. So if you have a shortfall of the deposit, well, the guarantee is coming from somewhere else. Now that probably makes no sense. So I'm gonna show you an example right now. Let's say for instance, you wanna purchase the 500K property. You would need the 50K as a deposit and then you have 35 to 40K of expenses. Now at the moment, if you only have $50,000, that's only gonna allow you to pay for the fees or the deposit. But let's say for instance, you have a close relative. Let's assume it's your grandparents, your parents or your sibling, and they have already a property or the family home. And that may have grown over time. Maybe they've held it for a while. Maybe they've paid down some of that debt. And let's say, for example, you're living in Sydney or Melbourne, and let's say the family home is there, and let's say it's worth a million dollars. Let's also assume that the debt amount on that property is 500K. So what that would mean is that equity, which is the market value minus the deposit, would mean a million dollars minus 500K means there's $500,000 worth of equity that's just sitting there. Now you can't just go to the bank and say, hey, well, there's 500K equity and some guy on YouTube told me that I could go access that, so give me my money. It doesn't work like that. How it works is that you would have to go to the bank and fulfill their servicing criteria. So in the bank's eyes, you should be able to go and take out that loan, but in order for you to take out that loan, you should be able to service the repayments on it. Now, they also don't give you 100% of the equity. So what they say is usable equity is very different. So 100% of the equity would be 500K. 
90% of the equity would be 450K and 80% of the equity is 400K. Now, most lenders are gonna go out there and give you 80%, which would mean $400,000 in this case. So if you can service that loan, you can literally go into the bank, take out the 400K and go and buy more investment properties. If you wanna know how you can do this with a whiteboard video explaining this, definitely go check out this video that I made only a couple of months ago that is super relevant even today. So let's say in this case, your parents go, well, look, I don't actually wanna purchase any investment properties, but I'm happy to help you. And so what they say is instead of taking out the 400K equity available, they will go and guarantee the 100K that you may wanna to put towards your property, which would be effectively a 20% deposit, or they could even go in and give you a 10% deposit. So either they give you 50K or 100K, it doesn't really matter, but essentially it allows you to substitute your own cash for that money. No cash transaction actually happens, it's just all in the back end. The bank will say, okay, well, I'm guaranteeing 100K from your family home into this property that you are purchasing as an investment. Now the 50K that you've saved, which would just make up the deposit, can now be used for the fees and it allows you to actually get into a property today. You may be in a position where you're living in the family home and been living there for like the last 10 years. Chances are that property has grown in value and it's also got debt reduced on it. So there should be a big chunk of equity that sits there. Now there's really two options. One, your parents can go, well, I wanna take retirement seriously for myself. How do I use this equity that's just sitting there to go and build a property portfolio? Well, okay, give Ravi a call. Or if your parents don't wanna do that, they can go and lend that money in the form of a guarantor loan to you so that you can start building out your own property portfolio. It's so important that you look at all of these tools that are available to us, as well as the expertise that's out there. Because it's really opportunity cost that's your biggest cost here. If you think about it and you say, well, no, I wanna do this all myself, I wanna sit there and I'm gonna figure it out. Well, yes, you could. You could spend time doing the education piece. You could go out there, build the confidence. And while you're doing all that, speak to agents, learn the market and figure out where you can actually invest into. All of that takes time. It would be as simple as an example I can use because it's so relevant to me only this morning. Now, if I decide I wanna get a cold press juice, I've got a couple of options. One, I could go down to the shops and just pick one up. I could go to the cafe, which would be made in front of me and it would be fantastic or I can go and get my own cold press fruit juicer and do it myself. Now let's say I go with the third option, which is go and get the cold press juicer, which I actually have at home, but I never use. And I could go and say, well, okay, I'm gonna make juice for myself. Now I have to put time in there, which means I'm not gonna get the juice as soon as I want. I also have to go and buy the ingredients, which means more time for me. And number three, and most importantly, I have to go do the washing up. By the time I get to that point, I don't even know if I want a juice or not. Versus if I go out there and say, I go to the shops, well, I don't know what's in there. There might be preservatives, things like that, because it needs to have a higher shelf life. Instead, if I go to the cafe and they make a really good juice, which they do, then I rely on someone who's got the best machinery and someone who does it probably 10 times a day. So the chance of them getting the ingredients right for the cocktail that I really want is gonna be so much higher than me simply going out there and doing it myself. And that is effectively the reason why some people are absolutely rocketing through when building out their property portfolio. And I know this because I see people who are literally going out there doing it themselves, come back 12 months later and say, oh yes, I bought one property, but I wanna buy more now. Versus some of the clients that we have are going, I've got now four properties in the last six months and I wanna continue moving. And all of that compounds because we know time in the market is more important than timing the market. If you can now get time in the market and time the market, well, mate, you've got a rocket ship that can take you to anywhere. So with the guarantor loan, you can go out there, get started today without having a deposit yourself. Now, again, this may not work for you and that's why you need the financial expertise around it. You can't constitute this as financial advice. You need to go and seek that with a financial expert. Now, if you're interested in knowing how you can do this with your parents and they've got heaps of equity, they have no idea how it works, you could go to the bank, which would give you only one option, or you could go out there and get with a mortgage broker. Now we have an in-house mortgage broking team. So if you wanna speak about this and how you can bulletproof your portfolio, definitely drop me an email at team at searchpropertyau.com.au. I'll have it pop up on the screen as well as leave a link in the description below. We've covered off the biggest pro or advantage in using a guarantor loan, which is I can get started today. I thought I was gonna to have to wait 12 months, but now I can buy not only just one, possibly even two properties. So what are the cons? And the biggest con here is that you purchase either the wrong property, which means the equity from your parents' home is stuck in your property and you can't do anything about it, or even worse, you can't make your repayments. 
you sit there and say, well, okay, I don't need the deposit. I've got the deposit covered, but you don't have the right spending habits. You don't have the right savings habits and you don't know how to mitigate risk. You go out there, take up a loan that you can't afford. And unfortunately, if you can't make the repayments, the guarantor is guaranteeing the loan, right? So then they are forced to having to make your repayments. So if this is something that you do decide to go down, you need to understand that you need to be very disciplined with how you make your repayments and you need to have confidence. If you are the person that's giving the guarantor loan to someone else, you need to know wholeheartedly that this is the right option, that they've shown enough discipline for you to have confidence to be able to execute something like this. Now, the best part about all of this process is that one, it's super easy to implement if you have the right people, and two, no cash is actually being transacted, so it's very simple and very clean. And the other benefit to all of this is that let's say, for instance, you do buy that property today, and over the next three years, the property has grown by $100,000 you can actually go to the bank and release that guarantor loan, which allows your parents or your sibling, whoever's given you the guarantor loan to then be released from that property and they would be back to square one. It allows you to get into the property market faster or your sibling or your kids. And it also means that in within a couple of years, you have all that equity available to go again and repeat the process. If you need any help, you've got all the links in the description below. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and you've taken some value from it. If you're someone that wants to get someone to help you with it, then share this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks guys.